Well, hello, friends. I'm one of the pastors here, and it's my joy to welcome you to this experience, this extension of what we're doing in and through North Cross. We pray that wherever you are and whatever you're doing, you know you are a, a participant in the great thing that God is doing in our midst. And we pray that you might experience God moving wherever you are, doing whatever you're doing, so that you might be drawn deeper into God's love. North Cross is a network of neighbors, and as such, wherever you are, we believe that you are connected to us here at North Cross. So again, welcome, and thank you for being a part of this experience. If you haven't done so already, we'd love for you to let us know who you are. The easiest, simplest way to do that is to open up the North Cross app. The app has uh, several features we've designed to enhance your experience of worship. One that I'd invite you to take a look at right now is the Connect card. If you just select the Connect button there on the app, that will give you an option to, again, let us know a little bit more about you and ways we might partner with you as you take your next step. Otherwise, you can, uh, if you've got a chat feature or option there, uh, wherever you're watching or however you're watching, participating, then we could ha have you uh, type in your name. That would be another way to let us know who you are and, and how we might communicate with one another. Friends, with all of that said, I pray that you're ready for this experience. We're going to sing in just a moment. We're going to pray and scripture will be opened and we'll uh, offer a message that we hope is helpful in uh, thinking about where God's at in our world and in our lives. But now we just want to start with a word of prayer. So will you pray with me? God, we do just give you all that we are about to do. Our singing and our praying, we, we just give it to you, God. And we pray that this worship, this experience that you've drawn us into might help us know you more fully. We pray, God, that there might be something that you would stir in us, something you might draw out of us. We pray, God that as we give this worship to you, it would be pleasing to you. In the name of Christ, we pray all of these things. Amen. Amen. Friends, it is time to worship our creator. I invite you, wherever you may be, to take a breath. Breathe in that Holy Spirit presence and join me in singing a few opening songs of praise.
sometimes we are here to worship because we know we need the Lord. And sometimes we're here just to sing praise and to say, worthy, worthy is the lamb who was slain. Holy, holy is Jesus, our Lord. Worthy is the lamb who was slain. For our praise and say, you are so holy, you are worthy, you're beyond our imaginations, beyond our understanding, and yet we try because who you are is so beautiful and wonderful and delightful. I pray we would see you in your creation in the gifts of this earth. 
in treasured meals that we share with, with people we love. I pray in those sweet times we would know your presence and we would know your love so deeply. I lift up today those who are feeling tired and weary of the world, the grief that is ever-present, the hurts that come. Whether that be fear or the unknown or loss of someone we love, a role that we had that we no longer share. Lord, I pray that you would send your comforter to intercede for us with groans that speak so much louder than words, that we would know your presence, we would know that you sit with us when things don't make sense, when they don't feel fair. Let us know that you are with us through it all. I pray you would open our eyes and our ears and our hearts to your holy word today. That we could be ready to receive something through your spirit, through Pastor Sean. You'd speak through him. You would connect us in such a way that your word lands squarely on our hearts, in our minds, our whole beings. We love you, and it is in your holy name we pray. Amen. If you joined us last week, uh, you know I asked the question about favorite foods. We talked a little bit about the food that we particularly enjoy, whether it was a last meal or just something to celebrate, one of those kind of things. And in all of that sharing, I don't believe anybody said, I just like a salad. I don't think anybody went with a vegetable. Now, clearly there were some vegetables mentioned. I'm going to guess, you know, like corn tortillas and the tacos or maybe corn oil to brown the meatballs. I was, you know, I was a spaghetti meatball guy. But generally, I didn't hear anybody shout, I want Brussels sprouts for my last meal, right? And nothing like that. Why do vegetables get, get such a bad rap? We know they're good for us. We know that they're important. They're packed with vitamins and nutrients, and, and they're part of a healthy diet. So, so why do vegetables get such a bad rap? I, I don't know. What, what I do know is as we begin talking about food, we want to include those items in our discussion. We want to think a little bit about vegetables, even though they're largely overlooked. Again, we know that it's possible to eat just a diet of vegetables. For some, that's actually required. Even so, uh, most of us aren't choosing that. Most of us aren't going that direction. We aren't skipping our meat. According to a recent Gallup poll, only 5% of the population in the United States considers itself to be vegetarian. Now, again, we might cut back on how much we, we, meat we eat or the types of meat we consume, especially when prices rise high or when there's a shortage in supply. But most of us live our lives as omnivores, right? We're eating meat and vegetables. We like our burgers and fries, it turns out. We've allowed ourselves, as a matter of fact, to be manipulated by industry into craving fatty, salty, and sugary foods. There's a science even devoted to such food that taps into the pleasure centers of our brains and thus reinforces our desire to consume these goods. Again, to my knowledge, most folks don't get a jolt of endorphins from eating green beans. My sister, uh, I would attest to that, I was remembering as a younger child uh, and kind of the rule for us was always, you had to have at least a bite of everything. My sister detested green beans. I don't know what it was about green beans. I don't know uh, if, if she had nightmares. I, don't, I really don't know why they were so horrible to her, but she, 
she just couldn't stand the sight, the smell, let alone the taste of a green bean. I remember a particular meal where uh, some green beans were on everybody's plate. My sister just couldn't do it. She just couldn't eat it. She tried a couple of times, but it was, she was making, you know, it was, it was not fun to watch. Let me just say it that way. At some point, my father got up from the table to go do something, and I quickly ate all the green beans on her plate. So that when he came back, the drama around eating green beans could, could be resolved. I don't know if you've got something like that with vegetables, if there's a particular vegetable that you just can't stomach, that there's just no way you could eat. If so, I hope you got a big brother that occasionally will just clean your plate for you so you don't get in trouble with the parents. We've been told and we know that eating veggies is good for us. Some even suggest it's a spiritual experience. You might remember uh, not so many years ago, uh, what some might consider a fad diet, the Daniel diet came out. Part of that particular diet or fast was really about connecting with God, of kind of recentering our experience of God. Some see eating vegetables, and that was the basis of the Daniel fast, the Daniel diet, as being a way to connect with God. So those who prepare the meals, listen up. The next time that your child or partner or friend is balking at eating the broccoli, just remind them that eating vegetables is a great way to practice the thankful part of our prayer. We've been sharing this table grace through this particular series. God is great. God is good. Let us thank God for our food. Yes, thankful for even the green leafy stuff. But why? Why thankful for vegetables in particular? Answering that will require that we dig into the story behind that Daniel diet, that Daniel fast. If you're not familiar, Daniel is, uh, his story is contained in our Older Testament. Daniel is a prophet. But why did he fast by eating vegetables? What was that all about? Again, in, in the book that bears his name, the book of Daniel, we get that full story. If you open up to Daniel 1, you'll read about how the Babylonian king Nebuchadnezzar invaded Judah. Again, I would just remind you, there's, at this point, there are two kingdoms. There's a northern kingdom and a southern kingdom, and the northern kingdom has fallen already. And the southern kingdom is called Judah, and its capital is Jerusalem. It's besieged by the Babylonians, and it eventually falls. As part of his conquest, Nebuchadnezzar takes young men as slaves. He's interested in the best and the brightest, the strongest, the best-looking, the healthiest. Daniel 1, that beginning chapter, starting with verse 5 through 7, records it this way. The king gave the young men a certain amount of food and wine every day. That was the same kind of food that the king ate. They were to be trained for three years. Then the young men would become servants of the king of Babylon. Among those young men were some from the people of Judah. These were Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Then Aspenaz, the chief officer, gave them Babylonian names. Daniel's new name was Balthazar. Hananiah's was Shadrach. Mishael's was Meshach. And Azariah's new name was Abednego. So you might have heard those names, uh, Radshak, Meshach, Abednego, Daniel. You might have heard those names. Here we have Daniel captured and delivered as a slave to the king of Babylon. And they're given a certain diet. It's exactly what the king is eating. Again, they're going to be trained and they're going to be uh, everything poured into them so that they could be ideal servants for the king. Well, despite his circumstance, and this is going to be a theme of Daniel's life if you read the rest of the book that bears his name, Daniel asked for permission to not eat the king's food as it would make him unclean. Daniel's faith, more specifically how he lives out his faith, is not consistent with eating and drinking the excessively luxurious delicacies of the king. Instead, he seeks to eat and drink simpler food, which he believes will help him connect with God. So we pick up the story then 
in Daniel 1, verses 11 to 17. Follow along here, if you will. Ashpenaz, remember again that chief official, he orders a guard to watch Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Daniel said to the guard, please give us this test for 10 days. Don't give us anything but vegetables to eat and water to drink. And then after 10 days, compare us with the other young men who do eat the king's food. See for yourself who looks healthier. Then you judge for yourself how you want to treat us, your servants. So the guard agreed to test them for 10 days. After 10 days, they looked very healthy. They looked better than all the other young men who ate the king's food. So the guard took away the king's special food and wine. He gave Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah vegetables instead. God gave these four men wisdom and the ability to learn. They learned many kinds of things people had written and studied. Daniel could also understand all kinds of visions and dreams. Friends, this is the word of God for the people of God, and we say, thanks be to God. That's the basis of that Daniel fast, this idea they were carted off into captivity. They were meant to be raised and trained as servants to the king, and part of that training included eating the king's food and drinking the king's wine. Daniel and his friends ask for permission not to do that. Instead, just to eat vegetables and drink water. That's the basis of the Daniel fast. That the idea of eating vegetables and drinking water might allow us, as it did for Daniel and his companions, to connect with God, stay connected with God, perhaps. Well, after the three years of training, these Israelite men are presented to the king, and they are found to be healthier and stronger and wiser than all the others. So not just for that 10 days, but for the entire three-year period, they emerge as the best prospects. They are the best of the best. Faced, you see, with the choice of eating the king's indulgent diet or eating the simple food that God provided, they chose vegetables and water, and they became healthier and stronger and better. Again, some have turned that into a diet, and that's okay, but don't miss the bigger picture. The real point, I believe, is connecting with and remaining connected to God through our food, through what we eat, through what we drink. I'm led to believe this might taste more like lentils and less like lobster. Now, that's not the message, of course, we hear on television or read on the billboards. The world bombards us with things to eat and drink and clothes to wear and ways to make ourselves appear younger and healthier and happier, more desirable, more impressive. Simple is for simpletons, advertisers scream in our ears. You're so old, you need our cream. You're so unhappy, you need our burger. You're so lonely that you need our shoes to make you popular. So we buy into the messaging and we seek pleasure and escape. But what we need is sustenance. What we need is a connection with God. So instead of feasting on that which is empty, the perfect combination as scientists have engineered it of sweet and salty and fatty or drinking what numbs us from experiencing the full range of our human emotions, our emotional selves, Daniel's example points us to what it can look like to practice physical, emotional, and spiritually healthy habits, especially related to food, especially by using food to connect us back to God. So when we pray, let us thank God for our food. We are doing more than merely saying thank you to God. We are, are, connect, are disconnected in our modern society from the sources of our food. We don't know where our food comes from. We don't know how it's been produced. We don't know the hands that have prepared it. We sometimes pray. We, we don't know the, the complete chain that has brought the food to us. And so when we say, thank you, God, for our food, it's to pause, perhaps, to, to remember that we did not create this food to perhaps be connected to those that helped bring the food to us. We remind ourselves that no matter who helps us receive our food, the family members, the chefs, the grocery store workers, farmers, just to name a few, that they're important in that process. We're reminded that 
ultimately, though, it's all a gift from God. And when we choose to eat simply, or perhaps I should say it this way, when we choose to eat mindfully, paying attention to what we eat, remembering where it comes from or finding out where it has been sourced, recognizing the whole scope of what it is to have received this meal, when we choose to eat that way mindfully all of the time or for a period of time or just even some of the time, we're making a choice by, by pausing, by thinking, by reflecting. We're expressing our love for and our trust in God. We are sacrificing a momentary jolt of feel-good endorphins, those chemicals that race through our brains, for a longer-term love of God, which I hope also gives us a jolt of feel-good chemicals in our brain. Upon eating the vegetables and drinking the water for three years, Daniel and the others who shared this diet didn't just look healthier than the others. They were healthier. They were stronger. They were wiser. And all of that, they recognized, was given to them, and as it's recorded here in our Scriptures, as a gift from God. So, don't hear me wrong, I'm not saying if you eat more salads, you're going to get buff, you're going to turn into an Einstein. I'm not saying that at all. I'm not saying you're going to be smarter than your neighbors or better looking than your coworkers. But I would suggest it is smart, it is wise even, to practice simplicity, mindfulness when we eat, to rest in the knowledge that God has provided it, to seek out and celebrate God's care to be thankful for the gift God has given us when we sit down at the table. It is healthy, I suggest, to seek God and to respond to God's grace with that thanksgiving. And eating provides the perfect context in which to do so. So I'm going to suggest to you and to myself, right, I'm I'm as much as a burger and steak and lobster guy as anybody, I'm going to suggest that we eat healthy today, whatever that looks like for you, whatever that means for you, that we're going to be conscious of, mindful of what we consume, that today we might even stop and pray for all the people we can think about who, who might have had a hand, who might have been helpful in bringing that meal to us. Especially, we want to pause and and give thanks to God. If you feel so bold, skip the fries and go with the carrot sticks. Go meatless for a day or a week or more. Be more selective with what you eat and why you're eating it. Let your eating and drinking be opportunities to recognize that God is with you and God is for you. Again, don't hear me wrong. Don't be overly strict here. This isn't a fad. This isn't a diet. That's that's not what I'm suggesting. What I'm talking about is how do we connect our relationship with God to the food we eat? How do we see God in what sustains us? So again, don't be overly strict. That's not the point. It's not a punishment, but a rest, a reset. It's an opportunity to thank God for our food and to grow in our love for God as we offer our thanks. So let us pray. God, you are great and you are good, and we thank you for our food. We thank you for the hands that have prepared it, those that worked the ground and raised the animals, those that harvested and collected and delivered, those that shipped and packaged and those that, that put it out in display, and those that made it available for us to purchase. We pray, God, that those that prepared that food in all the ways it has been prepared for our enjoyment, for our sustenance, would be blessed. And ultimately, God, we thank you because we know it is your hand that has guided all of those hands. We know it is your presence that makes life possible. We know it is a gift from you, what grows from the ground. 
and it's been made good for us. And so help us, God, as we enjoy our food, as we, as we are mindful and conscious of what we consume, and it might draw us deeper into your presence. It's through your Son, Jesus Christ, and by the power of his Spirit that we pray it. Amen. Friends, we now have the opportunity to respond to this word by offering our gifts back to God, that they may be used for glory, for good. Um, and you're invited, there are different ways on your screen um, to share either with um, our North Cross app, um, through our website, playlearnshare.org, on our giving page, texting to give, or mailing your gift to the church. I do pray this is an act of worship for you, that this is a time that uh, you would express the overflow um, of what God has done in your life, um, sharing with others. As I rise strength of God go before lift me up as I wake eyes of God look upon be my sight as I wait heart of God satisfy and sustain as I hear voice of God lead me on be my God be my God above and below me before and behind me in every eye that sees me Christ be all around me above and below me before 
Friends, I do pray that you experience Christ that way, that Christ surrounds us, that goes before us, that Christ is with us now and always. I pray that as you take steps into whatever's next for you, that you know that Christ already is with you. So friends, as you go, please go with the strength and the peace and the power of Christ. Go in love. Amen. As you go, I would remind you this doesn't have to be the end of our journey. It doesn't have to be the end of our experience. I invite you to come back next week where there'll be another opportunity for us to gauge in worship. I would also encourage you to watch those scrolling announcements for anything that might jump out at you, an opportunity to join a class or a study, uh, perhaps some kind of an event that might be interesting to you that you might want to know more about. If you do find such a thing, please reach out to us. Again, you can do that through the North Cross app, or you can simply visit us at playlearnshare.org, the church's website, where there'll be options and opportunities for you to connect with us there. Again, friends, go in peace. Amen. Oh God.